So hello everyone and welcome back to the first installment of Up For Discussions. Uh, we are expanding our usual weekly community updates as stories uh, that we want to cover that you might have missed um, during the week on that was posted on Discussions.app. So we start uh, as usual by giving you guys an update on what's been going on behind the scenes of Discussions.app in terms of developments and other uh, party initiatives. And then we move on to some of the content again that's been posted on Discussions.app in the past week. So uh, we kind of ask you to preserve your comments and questions until we finish at least the um, uh, d development updates and then as we get into contents if you do have any uh, comments or you know, suggestions questions that you want to add feel free to interrupt um, me at any time at that point so uh, today we have uh, asphyxia and Brian listening in asphyxia will not be joining us uh, vocally <laughs> and uh, Brian will be uh, chipping in here and there Paul is also Hello, everybody. <laughs> there's Brian and Paul will also be uh, hopping on the channel soon so you might hear him burst bursting in with his uh, wonderful LA accent uh, West Coast accent uh, sometime midway through the video. So with that, uh, let's start it with some housekeeping. So in terms of developments, uh, we have uh, two new things that we added, which is the trending and sorting options, actually three things, sorry. So on the front page, you see two new things, which is trending tags. So that will show you the uh, list of tags up to 10 of them. Uh, we're oh, up to nine of them. So uh, not sure what the exact number is, but a list of uh, tags that are trending on discussion. So that's when someone makes a post on that specific tag, even though you might not have subscribed to it, uh, it was showed up on the trending page. It's, and it's a way for us to kind of let you have a better way for let, letting users discover content. So right now uh, on my screen, trending is boy slash uh, hashtag boy, hashtag, hashtag free speech, hashtag EOS, hashtag uh, Linux, links. So again, I haven't subscribed to the free, free speech tag, but that is showing up on my trending tag. So I could go check it out if I'm interested in that. Uh, and again, the other op thing that we added was the shorting option. So you, can sh you have three shorting options now, and that is by popular, recent, and controversial. So I think the first two are pretty um, self-explanatory. Publish is whatever is uh, you know most voted uh, recent is the latest thing and controversial is uh, controversial is uh, kind of a algorithm adopted from Reddit where um, it is the kind of the post that's getting a lot of polarized votes so a lot of people voting up but also a lot of people voting down so uh, we, will, we think that's an interesting sorting option it tells you you know more than just what's going on but also shows you what's what's contentious uh, a po what's a contentious contentious post at the moment. Um, and in the more background stuff, we have added a content tab, which you could navigate to through the upper right um, in the settings. Uh, you will see a list, list of content you're watching currently, but also content that you mark as spam. So this is um, you know, for your power users out there, for your delegated moderators that want to keep, tab, keep a tab on which, which post you're watching and which post you, are, you have marked as spam and whether or not you want to move them as spam. So just you know, some extra power user tools. Uh, I'm also going to cover a few bugs that we know have been popping up quite a few times uh, just to let you guys know we're looking into it and they will be resolved sooner, sooner rather than later. So uh, image posting, uh, image uploading sometimes do fail. We look into the reason for that. Uh, list indentation, uh, you can't indent more than just one layer. Uh, I somehow managed to do it. We were just uh, talking about it internally. Um, I'm not sure how I did it, but uh, we're working on it to fix it so that you could do it as well. And lastly, uh, editing posts sometimes created uh, some kind of weird bugs and you know sometimes words disappear for no reason. We, we, we know that's very frustrating, so we're looking into fixing that uh, as soon as possible. And I do hear Paul joining us. I think uh, he's, uh, he's, gonna, he's on the highway, so it's going to be too noisy for him to join. At least uh, that's what he told me. Okay, so uh, that's all the bugs uh, in terms of events that are happening. We still have the boy riddle run that's going to continue on until tomorrow, which is March 2nd, the Monday. So uh, there's still a huge prize for the, if you could guess the height of John Heater, uh, the founder of boy. Uh, if you guess his height correctly, you could win up to 60,000 uh, boy tokens. And also there's, there's 15,000 boy tokens up for grabs every single day. Yeah, it looks like there's not a lot of competition right now, so there's a good chance for you to win. Yeah, exactly. You get some uh, very, very good hints. Uh, so, boy is, uh, I mean, sorry, John is about 10 universal banana units uh, tall. So, if you somehow manage to get a picture, <laughs> <laughs> a picture of John next to banana, you'll have a better chance. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other event we're running is the Atmos Free Speech event, and that's a uh, event spearheaded by your uh, Paul uh, and myself. Uh, so this is an uh, event that we're doing for discussions, um, you know, kind of want to communicate, but also bring attention to the value that we believe here in discussions that app. So go check it out. The contest is very easy. All you have to do is find a quote that you like, um, you know, from a historical person or, you know, or maybe a modern person. I, I saw someone submitted a quote by Amy Klobuchar, one of the candidates running for the presidency. So that was pretty interesting. 
um, I have some in my own as well, and uh, there's a few more pretty good quotes. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good way to, um, you know, especially when people, you know, a lot of people say they support free speech without really understanding what it means. I think it's one of those things that where it actually means different things to different people. Um, so it's good to see where everyone's coming from when they say they support free speech. So that's a contest we're running. Um, other than you know, just promoting free speech, you also get a little bit of atmos for entering into it. So we think it's a great little contest, and we hope you enter as well. Okay, so that is most of the housekeeping. So I'm gonna take a sip, and then uh, we move on to talking about content stuff. So yeah, Brian, did you enter a contest yet? Yes, I did. Oh, you did? You did? I didn't see that. Yes, I tried the uh, the free speech one. I don't think I did it properly. But <laughs> I'll definitely try again to give a get a chance to win. Okay, gotcha. Uh huh. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah. So, uh, go join. We are very interested in what you have to say about free speech. Uh, last bit. This is a new bit that we're gonna do, which is we gotta cover some of the contents on discussions. I'll try to keep it short, but I do have a long list of contents. And uh, Brian, feel free to cut me off uh, anytime you think I'm getting too deep into the weeds and maybe mm -hmm. uh, pull me back before I fall into the rabbit hole. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Yeah. So one of the first things that I want to talk about is the 2.5 charter that we released. Um, so this is the... Oh, okay, I might have to edit this. <laughs> I put the uh, Google Docs document on the charter instead of the, the discussions link. Okay, this is going to have edited out or something. Oh, yeah, I'll leave it in. Um, yeah, so we, we published the charter for discussions 2.5. It's basically a list of features and things that the team is focused on for the next um, month or two. So, you know, with discussions, moving from discussions one to discussions two, we did a complete rewrap of the site, you know, front end and back end. We did the code base, everything. Um, so that was a major update. For 2.5, we're not looking to do anything that dramatic. Instead, what we're looking to is kind of make sure we make the site very, very reliable. Because uh, right now we're working on partners. Uh, we want discussions to be a place they could rely on to use and to communicate with their community. So we really want to make sure the software and the website is reliable. And we also want to make the tools, make sure that there are enough tools available for them to make use of to build a community. So right now, obviously, we already have tipping, we already have airdropping, and with 2.5, we got to introduce uh, Ambassadors Program, which we're working on with our partner, uh, Blockbase. So uh, details on that is in the post. Go check it out. Go check out the features that we have planned. Uh, let us know what you're excited about, and we'll expect uh, we'll uh, make sure that it gets delivered. Okay, secondly, speaking of Blockbase, uh, so last week I asked uh, Hikado to explain to me a little bit what this whole deal with their sandbox is. And he gave me, gave me like a explain like I'm um, fine answer. So basically what, what Blockbase is doing, they're using uh, blockchain to make sure that the database integrity is, uh, is secure. That sounds like a lot of jargon, but just make sure that nobody is tampering with the database in a way that is, they're not uh, authenticated or authorized to do. And if there is changes to made to the database, that there's a history of that change, uh, of who made it, when it, when it happened, et cetera, et cetera. All the things that you expect from a blockchain, but apply to a database. So they just roll out their sandbox uh, on jungle so net. So it's going to be like a side chain to it, or how yeah, does that work? Yeah, so the idea is similar to like uh, temporary side chains. Uh, at least, again, I'm not, <laughs> not, not working on the project, but uh, mm -hmm. the idea is that you will have these um, almost like standby block producers. As soon as you stick your token, it's like, hey, I want to spin up a database. They will compete for your tokens and they start maintaining a database for you. And the interesting thing is that once you're done with it, you can actually take your token back and minus the fee that you pay to them and that uh, I mean, yeah, minus the fee you pay to them for keeping up the database and you could spend. Oh, the so there's like no setup costs, no initial fees to, to start it, right? Well, you, you wouldn't require the block based token. That would be the fee. Okay, got it. Yeah, so that's how that would work. Um, so it's a, it's a temporary side chain, uh, at least on my understanding of it. And if we have any questions, we can just uh, message him on uh, discussions.app, I assume? Yeah, for sure. Uh, he's there. If you have any questions, uh, just drop a drop a comment on the post. He's uh, watching. He's, he's 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 getting notifications on all these posts. And if he's not, I'll I'm watching them. I'll make sure he get the message. I'm the manual notification bot. All right, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's that. Another big piece. Uh, so that's mostly uh, I think the news. That's you know discussion specific related, but obviously discussion still on top of yours. And there's a ton of EOS news this week, starting with the inflation being reduced to 1%. Um, so this is, I wouldn't say it's misleading. Uh, I just say, I just want to, um, I don't know what's the word, but it, it's not It's not as if the token that's being offloaded to the market has been reduced. 
So EOS, yeah, so EOS is an inflationary token, unlike Bitcoin. And from the very beginning, when the block producers launched the blockchain, there was a criteria, this parameter that, you could, that they configured to how much token they want to print out to be used for paying block producers, but also to go to various different uh, aspects of the project. So in the very beginning, there was the idea that some of the inflation would be used to fund community projects. So things like, I don't know, a, a wallet, you know, which we didn't have in the beginning, was just kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, or maybe promotional events or anything like that. So if you're familiar with other cryptocurrencies like Dash, it's kind of like their treasury system. And if you're someone who's into EOS, you know that TLOS, the sister chain of EOS, actually have that up and running. And they've been, you know, they've been using that quite well, uh, if I might add. Uh, so anyway, long story short, um, that 5%, 4% uh, of it went to a savings account to be used for that purposes, but it was never used. So they what they what they did before and this is the second time it happened is that they would just take that money that's you know accumulating the EOS that's accumulating accumulating and they burned it uh, so essentially you know they, it's, uh, they just destroyed those tokens so five so percent inflation rate except four percent of it was put into a savings account and yeah. all of that was burned yeah exactly exactly okay. and this so is not the, they basically just maintain in the same one percent inflation rate yeah it's like the past year or so or two years exactly exactly okay, so cool. so it's not like is is it did they technically we do the inflation yes. But like the effective inflation is still the same thing. So, the, the, yeah, I, mean, I feel like it doesn't change anything financially, but it does serve a purpose, just solidifying the fact that there's only a one percent inflation rate. Yeah. If they increase it back to five percent, the value of yields itself might go down a little. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the interesting thing. So this is the second time they did it, and this time they kind of really cut it off. So mm -hmm. this time, um, they, they, uh, they disabled the savings account, and they. It, and they actually lowered it from 5% to 1%, whereas before they just burned it, the 4% that was accumulating. So so right now it's actually 1%, if that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so if, if 6E has a correction, yeah. um, the inflation rate was reduced from 5% to 1%, which is a result that means that block producers get paid less. So using simple numbers, imagine a supply of 100 million in year one, the supply is 105 million, then in year two, the supply is 110.25 with 1.05 million being paid up to the VPs. Mm -hmm. So with 1% using the same example, in year one is 101 million, and in year two is 102.01. Mm -hmm. So 1.01 million uh, EOS tokens are being paid to block producers. Mm -hmm. And um, based on the simple math, like 1.01 .01 is less than 1.05 million tokens. So it's a matter of like compounding uh, percentages. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, so that's, an, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're right, you're right. Um, the, we, I didn't really get into it, but like the block producers did take a pay cut Again, because you know when it's printing out five percent, that one percent. Anyways, they just get paying less. Uh, the same amount of tokens going onto the market. Well, maybe a little bit less, but not substantially less. Uh, I think that's that's the point. Yes. Um, yeah. So BPs are being paid less. BPs are taking a pay cut, and you know, I would just. I I think I don't. It's not disingenuous, but I think they kind of made it a bigger deal than it really is. It is cool that you know the BPs are taking a pay cut because usually, when we think about cryptocurrencies and you know especially with the Ethereum camp, like everything is incentive driven. Everything, if the number is right, the actor will act in a way that gives them the most reward. So it is interesting to see that uh, EOS block producers are all taking a pay cut, and that's kind of cool. Well, I'm gonna play devil's advocate advocate yeah. here. Um, it's not like the block producers really have a choice. <laughs> what do you mean? As in, like, if you're getting paid, like, they're going to get paid regardless, even if you reduce it. Yeah. They're not going to suddenly pull out of being a block producer, unless it's, like, too costly for them. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I thought you meant to go a very different direction there. I thought you meant, like, well, if they didn't do it, um, you know, the way also could just vote them out, which technically can be the case. It's possible, too. <laughs> but that's a whole nother can of worms uh, that we might cover next week, actually, because uh, I, I didn't include it in this meeting agenda, but Dan did, did come out with an article about the different compromises um, that blockchain governance or you know, blockchain consensus has to make. But uh, I haven't had the time to delve into that, so that might be something we cover next week. Speaking of Dan Larimer, uh, so he published an article about the voice token. Voice, if you're unfamiliar, it is the KYC, um, check your IP, check your physical location, uh, takes your social security number, gets your firstborn, 
and your blood. Oh, uh, no, no. Some of that is fault, but uh, it, it does require, require KYC. It is the most exciting social media network, the centralized social media network to be launched in recent memory, but obviously uh, it being KYC has not uh, made uh, many people particularly excited, including many on our team as well. Um, but another interesting thing about that about it is it is a social media platform with a token, uh, similar to Steam back when Steam you know was the hottest uh, decentralized social media platform on the block. And one of the things that really brought down Steam was uh, that the whales would often vote their own content and therefore giving themselves more tokens to get more power to vote on their own post. So that was one of the main concerns that people had about the voice token is, well, would the, will the rich get richer? And Dan came out with an article, you know, covering some about how the algorithm will work and uh, how, you know, it would be hard to game it and they're, you know, it's only in beta, they could still um, fix the algorithm to make sure that everything works out. Uh, so yeah, that is an interesting read. And I think, I don't know, I'm keeping my eye on it, but I have my reservations about it as well. Are you gonna sign up for the uh, voice, voice uh, social media platform, Brian? If uh, if it does, I've already tried signing up as a Canadian, but oh. obviously as a Canadian, they wouldn't let me sign up. Yeah, yeah. No, I I know what you mean. But once they, I'm not a full, I'm not a big fan of the whole KYC uh, thing going on right now. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I'll give it a try. See how it's like. If it's usable, or if it's not too intrusive, then you know it might be a successful platform. Yeah, and I think that's you know to play devil's advocate for voice is that. A lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, um, never had experience with cryptocurrency before Steemit. So Steemit really brought like a whole generation of audience, like a whole new wave of users. So I think Dan is probably trying to replicate that success within the confines of wall, because Steam was kind of um, you know, a somewhat gray area that they operated, whereas voice, you know, they're working with uh, legisl legislators and working with the lawmakers to make sure that everyone could have access to it. So that would open the doors. But I feel like the whole KYC thing is preventing Voice from onboarding a lot of uh, users. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure about the number of users they have right now, but it doesn't look significant. Yeah, I heard the numbers being floating around like somewhere around 500. Mm -hmm. That's, what that, that's a lot less than Steam. Like, than Steam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously they're not, they're not public yet, so we'll see what happens. That's fair, that's fair. But w w one of the things I've been doing is, you know, because, <laughs> because the platform requires you to put your full government name, I have just been referring Dan Lerner to Daniel James Lerner. Because that's his full uh, government name. That's a, a little, little inside joke I have for myself. Because so. <laughs> it's so strange. Like, I ha I've never heard people, like, the only people who knows my government name is, like, my family, like, my, my mother, my father, and maybe my sister. Like, no one ever yeah, calls me by my government name anymore. And it's, it'd be so strange for someone on a, on a platform that I don't, like, I don't have connection with these people. <laughs> why, are you t why are you calling my, you know, my, why do I have to show you my full name? I don't know. It's just strange. It's, it creates a strange social dynamic, I think. So, yeah. Okay, uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Yep. And so another Block One story. I'm not going to get too deep into it. Uh, it's uh, Block One is testing a new on-chain storage solution. So the title is somewhat misleading. It is a new on-chain storage solution, but it's not the storage solution that we usually typically think they have, think of as when we think of storage solutions as, you know, common users. So it's not storing files, it's not storing pictures, it's not storing anything. Uh, it's called disk and it's what it's most likely used for is to store metadata about files. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, so our very talented uh, Asphyxia have came out with an article explaining to us commoners how it would work. So um, Asphyxia says it's very similar to RAM and the main difference is that uh, it's done, the storage is done in disk and RAM and it's like going to be a lot cheaper. Um, it's not designed to replace RAM in any case. It, however, uh, it is going to help lower the cost of storing, storaging, storing um, infrequently accessed data. Uh, he also mentions that how this could be used to, you know, for privacy purposes. He's looking at different transaction models that could be done with this new solution. Uh, so yeah. So if you're interested in that, go take a read. Uh, it is in the link included in the uh, public meeting agenda. Okay, so I'm gonna skip six and come back to it uh, because that is a outside. That's a story kind of outside the EOS realm, uh, and is that maybe someone's getting two hundred thousand uh, dollars? Not me, not us, unfortunately. Uh, 
but uh, Block One has came out a few weeks ago or a week or two ago um, with a bounty to run Ethereum smart contracts on EOS. And someone have came forth and proposed their solutions, they proposed their solution in a YouTube video uh, with zero context. And I am actually the first one to recognize that this per individual have maybe just um, won $200,000. $200, so, yeah. Um, I don't know. I just feel it like it's, it's super interesting because he just dropped a video on the uh, EOS subreddit with zero context. Like for like, obviously it's a like huge deal. Like having having a way to run EDM smart contracts on EOS means that a lot of EDM developers, if they want to move, you know, their DAP or you know whatever they're working on onto EOS, it's that much easier. It's a huge deal. Uh, but he just dropped it out. He didn't mention anything about the prize or mention anything about you know, whatever it might be. He just came out with a very technical video describing what the solution is, how to use it, and documentation for it in a very uh, nonchalant fashion. So that was a curious, to say the very least. Do you know if Block One reached out to them yet? Uh, no, but the, the funny thing is, um, I think what happened this month, Block One, when they, when they, when they put out the bounty, <laughs> they didn't have a way for people to submit the bounty. So, oh, I see. <laughs> so actually the day after, um, the developer, um, Joff, uh, I can't pronounce his name, sorry. If you're listening, I'm sorry. But I, the, the day after he came out with the video showing that he's running EDM smart contracts on EOS, Block1 came out with a, with, a, uh, with a website page for him to submit uh, his solution to be evaluated. So I guess they didn't expect it to come so soon. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I hope everything works out for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's good for the EOS community too if this works out. Yeah, for sure. I don't know how how many like I hope um, the Ethereum community is. It seemed to me that there's they're relatively open mind open minded. I have met some Ethereum people, but there are definitely a, a core group that's like I'm not gonna touch anything other than Ethereum. So, yeah, I feel like it's very uh, polarized the reactions towards this uh, smart contract. Mm -hmm. They either love the idea of it or they just completely hate it and they just want to stick with Ethereum. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing in between going like eh. Yeah, there's a lot of you know. I mean, we know this from being in crypto. There's a lot of tribalism, tribalistic mindset. Um, that yes. you know, it's like it, it's either we must win and you must fail, or you know, mutual destruction. I guess is the other option. But uh, I don't think that needs to be the case. I think you know, Ethereum's doing great with uh, DeFi. You know, they're we rely on Dai to you know for our day to day operation. We think it's great. Uh, US, you know, there they have a lot of interesting experiment with the maker system that they're doing you know there's a lot of interesting financial instrument they're building on top of ethereum but there's a lot of very interesting everyday projects that are happening on eos you know with, when it comes to gaming when it comes to art when it comes to our platform you know like a decentralized social media platform that cannot be done on ethereum unfortunately but it doesn't have to it doesn't have to so so asphyxia has shared some of his insights he thinks that capitalism will be prevalent Mm -hmm. So if DApps have the financial incentive to be both on the EOS and Ethereum chain, they will, especially yeah. if it's easy to do via the smart contract. Yeah. So that's been the case with like DApps on EOS and them moving to other chains like Wax and Telos. Mm -hmm. Wherever there's money, they will go towards it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, yeah. Actually, one I don't of... see anything wrong with that either, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think... I think us being kind of... I think like the further you're away from that Bitcoin... Fin... I, wouldn't, I don't want to say fanatic, but core people... We're like it's, it's the more than technology it's an ideology um for those people uh, the more you're further away from that circle you start to see things more on like a practical level and yeah there's nothing wrong with that um okay so last story of our lovely first installment of our discussions uh and that is reddit uh reddit our inspiration our nemesis our love and hate the the website that sucks in the, mo the largest part of my day <laughs> And uh, <laughs> the monster I hope to recreate. <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it'll be better. Hopefully it won't be a monster. Um, but yeah, so Reddit, um, there has always been um, a bit of tensions, be a bit of tension between the Reddit community and some of its uh, sub communities, which is you know uh, specifically a political subreddit called the Donald, which is for the supporters of Donald Trump. Um, and recently, Reddit imposed a new rule of uh, mo content moderation, a new set of content moderation that um, has got a lot of people scratching their head, but also very concerned. And that is instead, so what they did first was 
Is, are you familiar at all with um, the Donald subreddit whole fiasco, Brian? No, I'm not, actually. Okay, so so this is interesting because um, obviously on, on Reddit you can start any community and obviously it's a, a lot of political groups develop leading up to the elections, right? You know, they want to be on there, they want to interact with the Reddit, broader Reddit community, start building their momentum there, online momentum there. Uh, so what happened was that the Donald subreddit community was particularly toxic. Um, for, uh, again, this is, I, I wasn't there at the time it happened. This is like from secondhand reading from you know, news articles and whatnot. And they would post a lot of, you know, things calling for violence, a lot of content that is not, you know, safe for work and generally against the Reddit policy. Um, so what they did, what Reddit did was they moved to quarantine that community, which essentially is making it so that unless you specifically go looking for it, you're not going to be able to find it. So it's not on trending, it's not, you know, it's not being recommended to you, like unless you have the URL or like, you do a Google search for that specific subreddit, it's not going to show up. So, so that's what happened um, uh, the first time around. Now the second time around, they are, they are um, imposing even harsher, uh, more strict set of rules in that not only is the community quarantine, anyone who uploads content that breaks policy would be punished and potentially have their account removed. Um, so it's yeah. quite extreme, in my opinion, for something that's just online. But, you know, I guess Reddit is large enough where, like, there's enough money involved where yeah. it makes sense for them to, like, uh, protect themselves. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's true. And there's also a, definitely a, I say, a, oh, I can't believe I'm saying this, I sound like one of those but yeah, there's definitely a liberal bias on Reddit. You know, the Reddit community as a whole is uh, very leans towards left on the political spectrum. Oh, for sure, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So the interest, the so the political implication, or you know, what could be perceived as a political implication of this is that the the Donald Red subreddit community got quarantined leading up to the 2016 election, and as you know, we are close to the 2020 election, and Reddit came out with these set of rules. So that is this a Reddit set of rules or is this like the mods on like the Donald? No, uh, oh, we're gonna get to the mod too, which is a, even more interesting. No, no, this is a Reddit rules. Reddit updated their okay, rules. Okay, keep on going. Yeah. yeah, so Reddit updated their rules. Um, so you know, that 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 coincidence, you know, raised a lot of eyebrows and you know, uh, a lot of people connected the dots again. Whether or not that's, that's the intention, we don't know, but it is suspiciously uh, close to the timeline. And speaking of moderators, uh, as you know, we have our own set of moderation system where you know anyone could be a moderator and anyone could pick their moderator uh, reddit does not have that uh, reddit have very as a moderator like uh, it's almost like a feudal system <laughs> where reddit reddit is like the king uh, the, the corporation is like the ruler uh, i guess of the country and then you have these little lords which is the uh, moderators of the subreddits um so Reddit, you know, the Mad King, the Enlightened King, whatever you want to call it, decided to kill off half of um, the moderators on the Donald. So half the moderators were removed from the Donald, and they have um, give the community the option to pick their new set of moderators from a set of pre-approved uh, moderators. That was a lot of word salad. But essentially what Reddit says, like, hey, yeah, get, we're going to get rid of half of you guys, and for the replacement, you can only pick from the handful of people we hand selected for you uh so obviously that's not very democratic um so yeah that that was uh, that didn't sit quite well with the community so anyone yeah all the, all this the donald people say they're gonna migrate uh they're gonna you know are we gonna capture some of that uh, migration towards uh, that discussion I mean, if they want to, um, I mean, we have nothing, we have no political, we try to have no, I mean, everyone has political bias, but, you know, as a platform, we, we don't have political biases, but they, they actually, they, they have their own backup, they call it, <laughs> and it's, it's such okay. a... I see, so, so they saw this coming already. Yeah, I mean, it, they were kind of, they, they know they were kind, times are kind of limited, um, so they set up this website, it has like, what are they, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, how, how do you call it, it's, it's, it's such a bad name, it's such a... It's, the, 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 the website's domain is thedonald.win It's such a tacky, tacky domain name It's like, oh my god <laughs> I didn't want to type that into my um, search bar just because of how tacky it was And it, it's everything you expect it to be It's just a ton of Donald, Donald Trump memes um, I just entered that website and it's it, quite something it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not for the faint of heart Let's just put it like that No, no, it's definitely not <laughs> <laughs> 
It's funny because they have like National Suicide Prevention Line on right on the front page. I don't know why. Okay. All right, let's not get into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not let's not jump to that that rabbit hole. Um, but yeah. Want to wrap up the uh, meeting? Yeah. So with that <laughs> that is everything we have to cover. Uh, that's everything that's up for discussions this week. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're trying this new format um, to just make it a little bit more entertaining, other than our usual uh, uh, development updates and you know internal process working updates, which is obviously important. But you know we're gonna have add a little bit of extra flair and fun to it to keep, keep you guys uh, enticed and listening in. And as a closer, um, please take a look at the boy contest and the Atmos token contest for free speech. There are a lot of tokens up for grabs and there's not a lot of competition right now. Yes, yeah, so definitely participate in our community events. We've got lots more, lots more of them coming uh, as we work with our partners and streamline our process to help them uh, acclimate, uh, I don't know, get used to the platform and uh, start running these uh, community events. So we think that's going to be lots of fun. Okay, with that, I'll see, me and Brian will see you guys next week. All right, bye. Ciao, ciao.